pulmonary arterial hypertension. When the pressure in the pulmonary arteries is higher than 25 millimeters of mercury, the condition is known as pulmonary arterial hypertension. It is a cardiopulmonary disease occurring due to vascular smooth muscle hypertrophy. It may be caused due to various etiologies like congenital heart diseases, coronary artery disease, connective tissue diseases or secondary to chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, interstitial lung diseases, emphysema. Patients with pulmonary arterial pressure of 21 to 24 millimeters of mercury are seen as high-risk patients and are expected to have complications like left ventricular hypertrophy and poor prognosis in case of congestive heart failure if left untreated. The mainstay of treatment for pulmonary arterial hypertension is vasodilation, which can be achieved by mainly calcium channel inhibitors, endothelin receptor antagonist, phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors, prostaglandin I2 analogs. Warfarin is given to all patients of pulmonary arterial hypertension. World Health Organization has functionally classified pulmonary hypertension into four categories, which are widely used for survival predictors of the disease. Six minutes walking test is considered to effectively rule out the exercise-induced exertion. Class 1. Can perform ordinary physical activity without symptoms. Class 2. Ordinary activity causes symptoms of dyspnea, fatigue, chest pain, or near syncope. Comfortable at rest. Class 3. Marked limitation of activity. Less than ordinary activity causes symptoms. Comfortable at rest. Class 4. Cannot perform any activity without symptoms. Dyspnea and or fatigue at rest. Vasoreactivity testing. This test is done with short-acting selective pulmonary vasodilators like inhaled nitric oxide, intravenous epoprostenol, intravenous adenosine. For a test to be considered positive, it should meet the following criteria. Reduction of mean pulmonary artery pressure greater than or equal to 10 millimeters of mercury. Achieving an absolute value of less than or equal to 40 millimeters of mercury. Associated with either an increased or unchanged cardiac output. Positive test result indicates a dominant vasoconstrictive component in the pathophysiology of the disease and is associated with a good prognosis. Calcium channel blockers. Patients who tested positive for vasoreactivity testing can be treated with calcium channel blockers. Most commonly used calcium channel blockers are nifedipine in bradycardia patients is greater than diltiazem in tachycardia patients and greater than amlodipine. These patients are closely monitored for safety, efficacy, and for hemodynamic improvement. If adequate results are not shown, the above-mentioned drugs can be used in combination for appropriate response. Side effects include systemic hypotension and lower limb peripheral edema. Drugs used for pulmonary hypertension. Phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors. Phosphodiesterase enzyme 5 metabolizes cyclic guanosine monophosphate in the smooth muscles of the blood vessels. The inhibitor of phosphodiesterase 5 antagonizes this action via nitric oxide cyclic guanosine monophosphate pathway, causing increase in the levels of cyclic guanosine monophosphate, causing vasodilation. Nitric oxide release also increases levels of cyclic guanosine monophosphate, promoting dephosphorylation of myosin like chain kinase. They not only decrease vascular resistance, but also improve arterial oxygenation, increasing exercise capacity. Examples of selective phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors sildenafil, tadalafil, and vardenafil. Sildenafil is short acting, thrice a day dosing, and tadalafil long acting, once daily dosing. Side effects are mostly due to vasodilation action, headache, dizziness, flushing, and epistaxis. Ryosegut is also a phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor with guanylate cyclase stimulator efficiency and causes an increase in cyclic guanosine monophosphate and vasodilatation. Syncope is a common side effect associated. Prostaglandin I2 analogs. Prostaglandin I2, produced from endothelial cells of vasculature, is associated with vasodilation via cyclic adenosine monophosphate pathway 
Hence, analogs are used in clinical practice to increase the levels of cyclic adenosine monophosphate. In addition to vasodilation, they also have anti aggregant of platelets and anti proliferative action on the cells. They are considered to be the most effective and the best drugs for the treatment of pulmonary hypertension. Iloprost It's a synthetic analog, potent pulmonary vasodilator. It produces vasodilation in the endothelial cells and increases oxygen delivery and cardiac index. It also inhibits the production of thromboxane A2 enzyme. It's given as an inhalation drug to enhance the localized action and minimize the systemic side effects. Frequent dosing is needed due to the shorter half-life. Side effects. Dizziness, headache, flushing, and fainting syncope. Epoprostenol. It is also a synthetic analog of prostacycline, improving patients symptomatically, increasing exercise capacity, and stabilizing them hemodynamically. It's the only treatment shown to reduce mortality. It's short-acting with a half-life of six minutes and administered as a continuous intravenous infusion pump at an initial dose of two to four nanograms per kilogram per minute and increasing rate. The optimal dose range is 20 and 40 nanograms per kilogram per minute. Side effects are similar, but abrupt treatment stoppage may cause rebound pulmonary hypertension with symptomatic deterioration and even death. Triprostanil Triprostanil is longer-acting, 4 hours, tricyclic benzidine analog of epiprostanil, which can be given either as a continuous subcutaneous infusion or as an intravenous infusion. Subcutaneous doses are started with 1 to 2 nanograms per kilogram per minute, with an optimal dose range of 20 and 80 nanograms per kilogram per minute. Pain at the site of infusion is a commonly known side effect. Endothelin Receptor Antagonist Vascular endothelium consists of a variety of substances that mediate both vasodilator, prostaglandin I2 and nitric oxide, and vasoconstrictor, endothelin, endothelin-1, endothelin-2, endothelin-3, which are activated according to the physiological environment. Endothelin-1 exhibits vasoconstrictor and mitogenic effects. In the pulmonary vascular smooth muscle cells, it binds to receptor isoforms endothelin A and endothelin B. Powerful vasoconstriction becomes prominent, which is mediated by the activation of the endothelin A receptor, which plays a crucial role in pulmonary hypertension, while the endothelin B receptor mediates the release of nitric oxide and prostaglandin I2. Endothelin receptor antagonists are the treatment of choice in World Health Organization Class 2 and 3, low-risk patients of pulmonary arterial hypertension. Blocking of endothelin receptors may be selective or may be non-selective. Bosentin inhibits both forms of endothelin receptors, non-selective, and is associated with side effects like hepatotoxicity, monthly liver function test monitored. Masotentin is also a non-selective, dual endothelin antagonist, which is known to cause anemia. Ambrosentin and syntaxitan, most selective, are selective endothelian A antagonist. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.